Hello everyone and welcome to episode 1 of the Karo Khan Rapid Speedrun. The format that I think would work best for this series is to play rapid games online and use both with the white pieces and the black pieces a Karo Khan setup every single game, right? So basically it means that we'll explore loads of different Karo Khan positions but it'll all be in the same kind of structure because it's all a Karo Khan, right? Just played from different sides of the board. So it makes it far easier for you guys to try and get a grasp of some of the key ideas in the Karo Khan. Rather than doing 15 minute plus 10 second games, so one 15 minute game with an analysis afterwards like I do in the rapid rating climb, I thought I might try doing two 10 minute games with zero second increment and doing a shorter analysis at the end of each game, but doing two of them in one episode. So let me know if you like that format or if you would rather just one 15 minute episode sorry, one 15 minute game an episode, but of course you can uh, come to that conclusion after you watch the video and, you know, have it in comparison to the Rating Climb series. Anyway, um, let's get into the game and I'm very excited for this. We've got the new Caro Connoisseur account ready uh, to go, so we'll see how this goes. I hope you guys enjoy. Okay, so game one, we are a we have the black pieces. My opponent doesn't go into a proper Caro with E4. So it's going to be more of a Slav defense setup, but a lot of the ideas carry over from the Cairo Khan anyway. Okay, my opponent does not want to commit to d4 yet. He's going for... Eh, it's not really a Catalan because he's traded the uh, sea pawn off. But we're just going to get some very typical Cairo Khan ideas in this by the looks of it. Um, let's go for knight c6. Maybe we'll take the full center if my opponent lets me. Queen b3 targeting d5, I'll probably play e6 to secure the pawn. I could potentially have tried to push d4. Okay, now e5 is off the cards because he controls that square, and I do not want to lose this pawn after all of this stuff. So, bishop f5 is tempting, but queen b3 would be very, very annoying. So I think e6 makes more sense. I'm going to lock my bishop in, but my bishop maintains defense of b7. My dark squared bishop can come to d6 or e7. Castle, I can maybe go b6, bishop b7 in the future. Try and take over the c file at some point with the rook. Maybe we can go a6, b5 to expand on the queen side, potentially get a knight to c4, maybe push b4 to kick his knight away. So it should be interesting. Should be an interesting position. And uh, there is no increment on this, by the way, so I am going to have to be quicker uh, in my explanations than I am in the Rating Climb series, where not only do we have 5 minutes extra per side, but we also have 10 second increment per move. So, like I said, let me know which format you prefer, but it's a nice little change of pace regardless. Okay, Knight to F3. My opponent isn't committing his Bishop yet. Uh, I think Bishop E7 is fine. Actually, if I go to d6, I don't like knight b5, but I also would like to go to d6 because bishop g5 isn't really a concern because we can go h6 and he can't retreat because the g3 square is occupied by a pawn and his bishop would get trapped. So I think I might just start with a6 and disallow any knight b5 ideas. a6 is a useful move anyway because I kind of want to play b5 at some point regardless. But a6 means that bishop to d6 is far easier to play because then knight to b5 will not attack the bishop. Could I drop the bishop back to b8? Yeah, maybe. But I want to bring my rook to c8 and that makes it very difficult to do that. And I don't think maneuvering the bishop to a7 is useful because e3 at some point will completely lock my bishop out the game. And I think it's more useful to try and support the e5 square and maybe an h5, h4 push, trying to undermine the g3 pawn at some point. We'll see, though. It's I just think d6 is quite an active square. This is surprising, though, because surely I just go h6. And you can't retreat, because then you get trapped. So I kind of expect him to trade with me. You could maybe take with the g-pawn and try and play down the g-file, but I think it makes more sense to take with the queen. Because the queen does a good job in the center. We can still maybe go for this h5, h4 idea. We can maybe push g5, g4 as well. Um, or we can go something like there, there. 
g5 h5 h4 to try and black blast through the king's side and we can maybe even put our king on f8 and just claim that it's safe bishop e3 that looks ugly that looks ugly hmm does he want queen d7 trying to sack on h6 if i castle maybe maybe i'm kind of tempted just to go b5 bishop b7 rook c8 That way we also add the bishop to the defense of e4 to make it even more difficult to play in the future. b5, he could go a4, but then we just push b5, and that's very nicely supported. The knight will have to go back to something like b1 or a2. So I think we might as well do this while we get the chance, and just ask white what this bishop is doing. Because if he isn't setting up this battery, then I don't see the point of the bishop on e3. Because I'm not threatening to take d4 anyway. Um, if, if, if we had castled, which was another move that I wanted to play, I feel like it kind of gave a purpose to the bishop on e3 by allowing this battery to form. Maybe he wants to go queen d2, bishop f4 and offer a trade, but that's a very long-winded plan just to trade off a set of bishops. And uh, yeah, it's way too much time to be spending. Then I can castle very safely. Because none of these sacrifices will exist. And just continue my uh, pressure on the queen side. I've got good control over the light squares in the position. So I'm a fan of that. And my bishop's nice and protected under this umbrella of light squared pawns. My light squared bishop is always going to be a bit of an issue. Because it's difficult to actually get out of the pawn chain. Because I don't really want to play e5. E5 will weaken D5 massively. And it would just give my opponent like scope for his light squared bishop and his dark squared bishop. If he wants to try and open the board up to give his bishop scope, then I want him to try and play E4 himself. But it will take a fair few moves for him to make that happen and also leave him with an isolated D pawn, which probably benefits me in the long run. So... Yeah, I'm liking this position. We've got a bit of a time advantage building up, which is very nice, especially, like I said, considering there's no increment in this format. <clears throat> I do like the maneuver knight a5, knight c4, targeting some of the dark squares. Is my opponent not just allowing that now? I don't know what his plan is. A4? But then B4, B, B4 still exists. I actually don't know what the point of this move is. Knight A5 just looks incredibly natural to me. Can't do any of this stuff. Because I'm just going to take his queen. He's got to move his queen. Where's the queen going? C2 or back to D1. C2 puts him on a vulnerable C file for my rook. I don't even know if I want to play knight C4. To be honest. I'd rather just play bishop B7, rook C8. Could my bishop go to D7? Maybe. But <clears throat> I think it might get in the way a bit on D7. B7 is kind of out of the way. It's also defending A6, which could be useful. Yeah, let's put it here. Because again, we're also making it more difficult for him to play e4 in the future if he moves this bishop. And our knight can go to c4 at any point. If my opponent goes b3 to preemptively stop me from going knight c4, then firstly, rook c8 is even more effective because the knight is no longer defended by the pawn. And we can also we can always just rotate the knight back to c6 and into b4. If he were to play b3. So this seems like a more practical choice from my opponent. But my knight is defended by my queen. So there is no actual problem here. He is setting up this battery though. And now we can play knight c4 with a fork. And I think now is the time to do it. Because we are attacking a lot of things in the white camp. Queen c1. I might just play rook c8. I might just play rook c8 and try and set up some ideas of b4 to try and open up the attack. 
Mm, that looks very, very nice. Moves like b4, moves like knight e4, trying to undermine the knight and open up this. Okay, b3. Mm -hmm. Now, if we take this bishop, queen takes bishop, the knight is defended. But we don't have to take the bishop. We could go knight b6. And just have pressure on the knight. Ooh, we also have a bishop to a3, actually. With an attack on the queen defended by the knight before we move the knight. That looks very nice. Yeah, there we go. There we go. I think this is probably... Probably will be given a great move by the computer, I feel like. Probably holds the advantage the best for the black pieces. Because now we have so much pressure in this position. Um, white... Oh, he just hangs a queen. Okay, well... That's a queen, and that is the game. There we go. Interesting game. Let's see what the game review has to say about it. I think this 10-minute with two games format could be quite good, uh, at least based on that first game. I know I wasn't able to go quite as in-depth on some of the ideas, but I feel like I addressed the most important reasons for the moves I was making. Of course, my opponent didn't have to blunder a queen there, but I feel like we still had a major advantage with all the pressure in the position. Let's get into the game analysis. If you want to skip to the second game, then you can, but I would recommend you stay around for the analysis. It's not going to be too long, probably like 5-10 minutes, but let's see what the computer has to say. Okay, well, that was an incredibly accurate game. It wasn't that long, to be fair, like the game was kind of short, but still... 76% accuracy for my opponent, 94.8 for myself, and the computer says no, no inaccuracies, no mistakes, no blunders, no misses, so that's pretty nice, that's pretty nice, let's see, so c4, c6, knight c3, d5, we don't get a typical Karo Khan setup, but a lot of the same ideas apply, and we enter more of an exchange Slav territory, Although my opponent plays it in more of an English fashion. Now the computer here wants d4. Which I guess makes sense. But I also felt like I was just opening myself up to a lot of attacking possibilities if I did this. I guess if queen a4, knight c6, I'm fine. But I don't know, the knight can always come to e4. And I need to play f5 to try and maintain the advantage. Knight g5, e5 opening the attack up. Bishop g2 trying to take the knight like this. And I would be losing. So it's complicated. But I play it in more of a Karo Khan style, right? This is more what you would expect to get from Karo Khan games. Of course my opponent doesn't play it necessarily traditionally. And it is more of a Slav setup, like I said. A lot of the same ideas apply, and we played it kind of how I would just play a Karo, even though it was technically a Slav. So, Bishop G2, Knight C6, again the computer likes this D4 idea, but I'm not thrilled with it. I don't really want to trade my Knight off, to be honest. Uh, I feel like my Knight's quite good. So I just decide to develop. My opponent goes D4, E6. Bishop F5 is totally playable, but I just didn't like Queen B3. Computer says I can sack this pawn. Oh, because I can take on d4, I suppose. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. But maybe I should have done that. I like playing it in more of this semi-slav slash... Well, it's more of a French structure, actually, a lot of the time. Um, I feel like black has a lot of play and is incredibly solid. Knight f3, a6. The computer likes to move a6. Prefers h6, but I kind of wanted his bishop to come out to g5, personally. Bishop d6, bishop g5, I was very happy to see this. Because after h6, my opponent has to trade. Like, he really should be trading. And I've got the bishop pair. Like, I'm, I'm a very happy man. Computer claims you should be trying to play e4. I suppose after d e4, knight e4, you're going to be winning the dark squared bishop back. Something like this. But white ends up with an isolated queen pawn. And I feel like it's quite difficult to play this position with the white pieces. Um, I think I'd always take black here. White has a bit more development. But 
if I can just develop quickly, get my rooks to like the d8 and c8 squares, maybe play b5, bishop b7. I know I'm saying like five moves in a row that I'm just going to magically get without my opponent posing any threats, but I take this with the black pieces personally. Anyhow, my opponent goes bishop to e3. We go b5. Bishop d7 was also good, but okay. Queen b3. And the thing is, the best move for white is bishop f4, just admitting that bishop e3 was a bad move. But that's very unlikely for a human to play, and just admit that he put the bishop on, a wrong, on the wrong square. Because, like the computer showed in the bishop f6, queen f6, e4 line, e4 is the idea for white, because he needs to liberate his bishop and challenge my d5 pawn. When he puts his bishop on e3, he can't do that. And I take full advantage. My opponent can't strike in the center. He's not going to be striking on the king side anytime soon. So the play is on the queen side. So I want to dominate the queen side with moves like b5. Queen b3 is just not good. Because knight a5 is what I wanted to do anyway. And now it comes with tempo. Queen c2. Bishop b7. I want to play rook to c8. Queen d2. He's just shuffling his queen. He's come out to a4. He's come back to c2. Then he's moving to d2. Like, if you're going to do anything in this position, again, the computer wants to trade bishops, but that's not going to happen. You need to be trying to bring a rook to the C file, because this is the only open file. Queen D2 allows knight C4. Queen C1, rook C8. If my opponent plays a lazy move like H3, then I maybe has have ideas of like B4, knight A4. I don't actually have any discoveries because the queen controls all the squares my knight could hop to. But I just dominate this position. Like, I don't need an immediate threat because I'm all over white and he can't do a whole lot. His knight's kind of stuck, the bishop's stupid, the queen's just vulnerable, the rook can't get out, this knight isn't doing a whole lot. It's just a very nice position. Rook c8, b3 is a mistake. And yeah, bishop a3 is given a great move. I don't know why it's not showing up on the board, but it is given a great move. Because this is what holds the advantage. The computer wants to give up the queen for two pieces, which obviously is completely losing. Because it's not like his white's minor pieces are even doing anything that great anyway. Maybe it was a better try. Um, more realistically, a move like, uh, let's say... Queen b1 is the other good move. But that just gives the knight, after knight e3, pawn e3, rook c3. So let's say queen c2 is played, keeping an eye on the knight. I still have this and then b4. Like I was saying during the game, these ideas existed and he just loses a, a whole piece. He can't even challenge me on the c-file anymore because my bishop controls c1, so... This is game over. My opponent makes it nice and easy by giving me a queen. And that is game one. Let's get into the second game. All right, we have the black pieces again. This was not um, planned or anything because we're going to be doing uh, c3, d4 with white. But yeah, we have e4. We're going to go into a caro, a true caro. And will my opponent play the two knights? No, he pushes e5. Okay, so we have a variation of the advance. I was about to say advanced. I don't I don't speak like that quite. We have the advanced Caro. And I'm going to go bishop g4. h3. I'm going to, just going to drop back. If you push g4, I'm going to be a very happy man. No, bishop to e2. Okay. I think uh, e6 is a very fair move to be playing. I could start with knight d7. But all of these e6 ideas do exist in a lot of cases, trying to weaken my king and make it very difficult for me to develop my bishop because it's hard for me to move the e7 pawn with a pawn on e6. So I'm just going to go e6. We have the classic triangle of the Karo Khan. And what we're going to do is try and put pressure on e5. After d4, we're going to go c5. And... This probably transposes from a different line of the advanced, because uh, we kind of took a weird route into it, but... Knight g5, what? This I have not seen. Obviously it's defended. 
Now, if we take and queen takes, maybe you can claim the knight is a good piece. But I think I might just drop my bishop back to g6 and say, bro, what is your knight doing here? I'm not even going to kick you out. Like, it's not doing anything because my bishop will be controlling these uh, potentially vulnerable squares. I'm just going to drop back. If you go bishop h5, wanting me to go bishop h5, queen h5 with potential attacks, I'm just not going to take you. I'm just going to let you take me. And same with bishop d3. You can take me. I ain't taking you. Uh, if you want to open the h file for me, then go ahead. We could consider taking on d4, but bishop to g6, hg6, queen d4, knight c6. That actually looks quite good. He could go bishop to b5 check, though. Knight c6, queen d4. I don't think I'm thrilled about that. So I think I'm going to start with knight c6. And then if he goes bishop b5, I'm not going to take. I'm going to make him waste another move with the bishop. Okay, c3. I think I should take him. I think that's the principled line. We could consider queen b6 though. That also stops bishop b5 ideas and just puts more pressure on the pawn. If he takes me, then bishop takes. There's no knight c3, knight a4 to fork my pieces. And we're putting pressure on f2, also pressure on b2. So that looks pretty good to me. I'm not worried about anything on the king side right now. Um, if his queen, I don't know, moves, then we're just going to take the bishop. Okay, here we actually can't take the bishop because of queen f2. I think we just have knight h6 though. Just defending. Yeah, because the only way to get rid of the knight is to move this knight. But then there's no threat. So if knight h6, bishop g6, hg6. We're nice and defended. There's not an issue there. I guess it looks kind of scary, but I think we're fine. And if he tries some weird sacrifice on like e6, there's nothing to it. Might play bishop e7 at some point to just put pressure on the knight. But in the meantime, d4 looks weak. If we castle, we're probably going to be very happy as well. Although we could even go queenside if we really want to. Um, we have a lot of pressure going. It looks kind of scary, but I don't think there's anything substantial here. We always have knight f5 as an idea too to block the queen. And again, we are threatening just to take d4. Um, okay, knight a3 just looks like a bad move. I don't think he quite sees what the issues are in his position because we're just going to take on d4. And after pawn takes, knight takes, where's your queen going? If the queen goes to f4 to try and maintain pressure, then we can probably just play bishop a3, ba3, knight c2 check. There we go. There we go. We're up a pawn. And um, white is not looking in good shape right now. The Karo Khan is a very venomous opening, especially in the advanced variations where we just put tons of pressure on the white center. Often it can open up in a very bad way for white and in a very beneficial way for us. And we do have this H file that is opening up, which could be useful in the future. We can consider taking this knight. The knight isn't necessarily going anywhere, but... This isn't a bad move. After bishop d2, we facilitate trades. But he could just move the king. Hmm. What do I want to do? If I take the knight, then he takes. I'm not sure what my follow-up is, to be honest. He's kind of threatening bishop e3. So, I mean, I would have checks to try and get out of the situation, potentially, but I don't want to allow that. I could just drop back to c6, to be fair. Renew this threat. And get my knight out of any danger. If knight c6, knight e6, fe6, queen g6... 
King d7, there's no more checks because f7 is covered by the knight. If here, here. Maybe we can just give a check. I think queen d3 is kind of a practical move from white, but knight c6 looks like the most logical to me. I know I just spent a lot of time on that move, and I really don't have the ability to be spending quite that long. So that's a bit of poor time management on my part, but hey-ho. We can also consider bishop to b4 check. Looks good to me. If he trades bishops, then fantastic. If not, he has to move the king. If he goes to f1, we can maybe consider trading queens, but it will mess up our pawn structure. And we're only at one pawn. So it's nothing game-ending. If he goes here... Maybe we can just go to a5. Okay, he goes to e2. I like the move bishop to c5, actually, because we're also threatening queen to b2 check. And potentially knight d4. Although we, there is also this d4 move, just attacking the bishop. And if we move like bishop to f4, maybe we can take. And then like take. Queen b2, king f3. It's interesting. Knight f5. But I don't like putting my pawn there because then knight e4 into a square like d6 exists. So I think bishop c5 is probably a bit simpler. I think this is a bit of a simpler approach. These uh, attacks don't scare me, particularly because we should just have king f8. It's a bit different now because if we go to d7, he can take on g6. Although something like knight e6, f e6, queen g6, king e7, queen g7, knight f7 doesn't quite work here because bishop g5 exists, but... Those types of ideas should be good. Okay, I don't really see the point of this move. I'm just going to take your bishop. If you take with the queen, I might just trade queens. If you take with the pawn, you ruin your structure, obviously. Knight f5 looks good. We can take we can take on b2, but then rook c2 is kind of annoying. So I'm going to play this just to get rid of any of these ideas. Also, just put pressure on the pawn. Threaten moves like knight g3. We can bring this rook into the game potentially as well. I think my opponent is creating some useful counterplay, but I don't think it's enough. Knight g3 looks tempting. I'm a bit worried about king d2 though. Because if I take and rook takes, he does actually have a lot of pressure. Here, here, here. Ooh, that looks good, though. Let's do this. Let's do it. If he goes here, then we're going to take, and his king is going to be blocking the file. So I don't mind that. Yeah, here I think we can take. And if rook c2, then we can take on f1 with check? Maybe. I feel like this is a little bit risky on my part. Maybe I should have just taken e5 with an attack on the queen, but... Give this check. Yeah, let's give this check. I might not even take the rook, actually. I might play knight e5 to attack the queen. Because I don't want the queen to recapture the rook, really. Here, we're also defending f7. Where does the queen go? 
The queen trades herself off, then fantastic. I don't know where else the queen can actually move to, to be honest. Goes like here, then takes, takes, takes. I think that's good. It looks scary. Like, it really does, because my king looks incredibly open. But I think my attacking pieces are doing a good enough job. My rooks aren't really in the game, I know. But I think I can castle if I really need to, to provide more defense for f7 and get my king out of the center of the board, connect my rooks, and then maybe we can play a move like rook c8. But knight e5 looks kind of like lights out to me. It looks flimsy, don't get me wrong. We've got a lot of vulnerable looking pieces in the center of the board. But his pieces aren't exactly well defended, are they? Like, all of these pieces are very, very flimsy, and his king is very weak. When I say flimsy, I mean the pieces aren't really defended by anything. And like I said, you can say the same thing about mine, but my pieces are making threats. Like, they actually have threats going on. His pieces don't. Yeah, they're attacking f7, but f7 is defended. Other than that, what are you threatening? A queen trade? Like, that only benefits me, because this rook is hanging at the end of the line. Now, what I didn't want to do here was take the rook, and after queen takes, I suppose I can probably castle and just defend f7, but this seems like a simpler win to me. We take the rook, rook c7, sorry, knight c7, um, king d7, take, then we have e3 with check picking up the rook, so that shouldn't work. That should not work. You could even just consider king e7. Although f7 is defended by the knight anyway. So king d7 actually looks better because we're putting pressure on the knight. And after the knight takes here, pick up the rook, the knight has no escape. f7 is defended by this knight, so we have no worries. And this should be an easy win. Because the knight is hanging. And we'll be up a whole rook and a fair few pawns. What, like four pawns so yeah there we go nice little caro game well again because these are all going to be caro games but this was a true caro khan as opposed to the previous game which was more of a slav okay i'm going to go pick up the pawns we do have to play quick because uh, there is no increment but a minute is plenty of time to win this plenty of time okay let's give a check let's force the king back Give another check. Give another check. 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 Ooh. Check. <laughs> Bro offered me a draw? Excuse me? <laughs> what? The king has plenty of squares to move to, so we're not stalemating. Uh, I'm actually just going to move the rook back so the king has loads of squares that he can go to, and then we're going to push for a queen. Rook's defended. Always make sure the king has squares to move to, but since we're promoting with check, it is not a concern. And as long as we... He's still offering me draws as well. As long as we still continue to give checks, it's always going to end in a checkmate. And here we have a simple mating pattern. We've allowed a checkmate. I don't know why I got concerned that might be a stalemate there, because <laughs> the king only has two squares. And a rook c1 is mate regardless. But, I don't know, pre-moves kind of make me a bit nervous sometimes. Just because there is a chance I could do something wrong. I have a feeling he's he just offered me another draw. Bruv, what? <laughs> Can you not? He's just going to wait this out as well. I'm going to pause this because he's just going to wait this out. So, I'll save you the trouble. Okay, he, he hasn't waited quite as long as I thought he would. There is checkmate. <clears throat> and a very interesting game. I think um, the opening was a little bit odd, because normally you don't have the advanced in this way. Normally it's after d4, not d6, d5, e5, and you might bring a knight to f3 later on. But here it was a little bit odd. I feel like we tackled the position very well, though. Um, 
And yeah, the game got a little bit crazy. Knight g5 was interesting, but I felt like we were never really in trouble. Queen f3 freaked me out a little bit, but we were nice and defended. Knight a3 was not a good idea, but I'll get the computer analysis on, see what the game review says, and see where we could have done better, where my opponent also could have done better, and if he actually had any chances at all to put some pressure on me. Alright, so game review gives my opponent 79.3% accuracy and myself 88.0. So we did both make mistakes, but it was a very interesting game for sure. Like I said, this is a kind of strange setup, but I think we played it well. Bishop f5 is totally playable here. c5 is also playable, just preemptively stopping d4 and freeing up the c6 square for the knight which i did consider but i thought bishop g4 was nice because we just immediately put some pressure on apparently taking was better and i guess we just go e6 and yeah we've given my opponent the bishop pair but we dominate the light squares in absence of the light squared bishop something like d4 c5 that actually makes a lot of sense because this is very similar very similar to some other um, advanced Karo Khan lines with these sort of positions like this. This is a very common uh, type of position in the advanced variation. And I just switched the game back to this game and following the computer line, this is the exact same position. So I suppose that makes sense. I suppose that makes sense, just a different move order. But I go back to h5 because I'm not really worried about my opponent pushing g4. That just looks like a bad move to me. Bishop g6. My bishop's still strong. It's just as if I put it on f5 in the first place. Except my opponent's committed pawns to h3 and g4, which are probably only going to be weaknesses. And the best move for white is to give up the pawn on e6 and then push d4 to try and control e5 which I mentioned during the game, is often an idea to make it difficult for me to go e5, e6 and bring this bishop out. So that's quite interesting. But a lot of the time, you're supposed to bring your queen to d6, knight to d7, knight to f6 with the black pieces, and maybe drop the bishop back to f7 to bring this dark square bishop out via a fianchetto. It's interesting though. Um, but yeah, my opponent goes bishop to e2 instead. We push e6, which is the best move, because like I said... It's kind of difficult to move with black. We could go c5 to prepare knight b to c6. But yeah, e6 is the best move for white. And again, we have that same problem that I just went over. So I didn't want to enter any of these lines. I wanted to keep it simple with e6, e4, then we go c5. Knight g5 is just odd. It, it's just a weird move. I've never really seen it. Moves like c3 make sense. c4 is even a move. Uh, knight bd2 is a move just to support the knight further. And it's all very normal looking. Knight g5 though. Apparently taking on e2 is the best. And then just taking on d4. And this isn't a problem. I guess we just have queen d7. But I don't know. I think I got a little bit spooked by ideas of attacking the king side. But there's nothing there. Like there really isn't. I don't know why I didn't go for this. I I just dropped back to g6. I think my my point is that like these pieces are not positioned correctly whatsoever. Um, although I could have taken advantage of it in a better way, the bishop and the knight are not on the right squares. Just hands down. So bishop d3. We go knight c6. This was a move I considered, and if you went for something like this, then I would have been very very happy with the position. But what I didn't like was bishop to b5. And after knight c6, queen to d4. I wasn't thrilled with this. I guess knight e7 and I'm good. And e5 is still weak. But I felt like I could push for more. So I chose knight c6 first. Because if you take on c5, not only does e5 hang, but also the c5 pawn hangs. Taking on e5 is better though, because I guess c5... Is harder to defend than e5 is. So my opponent goes c3, which is a good move. I go queen b6. Knight h6 was better, I guess, preemptively preparing to defend f7. 
Knight g to e7 is also good. Taking on d3 is also good. And then knight g to e7. But we go queen b6. It's a good move. Queen f3, knight h6. Just defending everything. My opponent takes, which is the only good move. Apparently. Takes, takes. And knight a3 is just a mistake. Like, I feel like that was quite obvious. Taking on c5 makes more sense. Bishop c5 lining up this battery. e5 is under attack. If my opponent goes... Oh, sorry. For a move like bishop f4. Then b2 hangs. So he has to play a move like queen e2 to defend the pawn. Sorry, I'm very tired. I don't know why. Um, yeah, then e5 is defended. But then this knight isn't really doing anything. Moves like rook d8 look decent. Knight f5 probably is what I would want to play. Because if castle, if castles, I should have knight g3. Oh, but then... So knight g3 with the idea that this is a fork. And the pawn can't take. But queen f3 attacks f7. And I have to drop back. And then you can probably go rook e1 to defend e5. So that trick doesn't work quite yet. But we do have ideas of rook h5 apparently. Maybe king e7. Rook a to h8. And yeah the position looks really really good. Oh maybe you're now threatening knight g3. Because if queen f3 you can take. Yeah, look at that. And after bishop g5, knight f1, king f1, queen b2. Ah, so this bishop's overloaded with defense of the knight and the defense of the b2 pawn. That's very interesting. Very cool. But yeah, knight a3, just not a good move. We take on d4 and we just go up a clean pawn. Bishop b4 check first is apparently better. If bishop d2, we obviously take... If king to f1, then we proceed with knight d4. And the difference. Knight g4 apparently is the idea with a pin on the h pawn. This is weird. Maybe we're setting up threats on f2 as well. And if bishop e3, we just take f e3 knight f5 and yeah we just have a lot going on in this position and the knight isn't really going anywhere if you want to trade queens with me like in the game more than happy like i will happily trade queens uh with this kind of thing going on but i go knight d4 immediately queen d3 i thought was a good move knight c6 isn't an accuracy though bishop e4 check is better if bishop d2 I was just going to trade, to be honest, and then probably retreat the knight, which is fine, but apparently I should just play knight g4. I didn't see this idea to go after f2 like this, and if takes, you take on e5 first, and if you, oh, you can't trade queens because the knight defends that square, so I move like queen c3. Oh, and then you have these ideas. Oh, sorry. These ideas. Same same idea, wrong execution. <laughs> Very bad execution from me. And you win the queen back and emerge up like a couple pawns. Yeah, a couple pawns up. Interesting. My opponent goes bishop b3. I check on b4. Apparently taking on b2 was better. Why did I not do this? I think I was worried of rook b1. Oh, but the knight's just hanging. What about knight b5? Then the rook hangs. So knight c2 is the only move to defend both pieces. And then we just take on e5. Okay, maybe I should have been a bit braver. Maybe I should have been a bit braver. But bishop b4 check is still a good move. King e2. If you drop back to um, d2 in this position, I was just going to trade. Might not be the best idea, but I'm going to trade and go up two pawns very happily. Uh, to keep things nice and simple. But king e2 is played. I don't want to go queen to a6 here. Because yes I'm up a pawn. And I trade the queens off. But come on this is my extra pawn. Like I have two sets of double pawns. And the a pawns are not good. a7 is just incredibly weak. If anything. So after a move like knight c2. To probably avoid me taking. And ruining your pawn structure. Something like this. 
I guess it's fine for black. I probably do have some chances down the B file and the C file and this past D pawn. But bishop c5 I liked more. So I did consider the move d4. But yeah, there's not that much. What was the line I calculated? I calculated a specific line. I think I calculated bishop a3. And if queen a3 then d3? What? And if queen takes, then you take on b2. If here, knight d4, king g3, knight e2, king f3, knight f4, king f4. This is very odd. Very odd line. But yeah, I thought d4 was a bit uh, difficult. Knight e5 is the best move. And if you take my queen, then I take your queen. If you take here, I take here. Actually, maybe I start by taking the knight. Yeah, I can, but taking here is better. Knight c2, bishop e7, knight f3, maybe knight f5. And again, I'm just up two pawns, but the structure's a bit ugly. But up two pawns, I think it's now quite easily winning. But it's a very complicated position. I wasn't fully convinced... I mean, you can play a move like queen b5 as well. And I'm up two pawns, but white kind of has some play. Although it should be winning. Anyway, I chose bishop c5 because I thought it was the easiest way to approach the position. And if you take me queen c5, the e5 pawn is still hanging, knight d4 is on the cards. I thought this was a good position. This is the best computer line. Looking at b2, knight goes back to f3, queen b2 check. I end up like two pawns to the good. White has some nice activity. I'm supposed to just take on e5 and take the plunge, but no chance I do that. <laughs> no way. But it's an interesting position. White is threatening rook b1 with rook b7 though. So yeah, this probably would have been a better try from white. Realistically, I'd probably be more inclined to play queen b6, just to keep the pressure here, but really I want to stick around and help defend the position, if anything else, and play moves like knight to f5 to get my knight involved, maybe castle, maybe rook c8, and I feel like upper pawn, this position is still quite nice. Rook a c1 here is played though, and this just allows bishop e3. If you take with the queen... I can take on b2 with check. I can also play knight d4 check. And it's just not nice. It's just not a nice position for white. So he takes with the f pawn. I go knight f5. I can take on b2, but I didn't want to get involved in any complications. I guess e5 hangs, which I did miss, but I felt like knight f5 was an easier move. Just putting a ton of pressure on the position. We're attacking so many things. Rook hf1, knight g3, king d2. Here I was a little bit concerned about knight takes f1 because, I don't know, maybe there's some threats. Realistically, there's nothing. And I can always just play a move like knight d8 if I really need to to defend, or I can castle. But I don't know, I felt like this was a bit of an easier way to go about it with queen b2 first. Rook c2, queen b4, king d1. Um, I was very happy with these moves. And again, I can take on f1, queen f1. I just didn't like the fact that he had potential threats. Maybe a move, like something like queen f2, queen h4, going after h7 if I castle was a bit annoying. Again, knight d8 is always a move. Knight takes e5 is even a move. But I thought here knight e5 was more accurate, which is correct. Because the queen can't go anywhere. The queen just can't do anything. Because she can't maintain defense of this rook. And she can't make any threats. So queen b5 is the best move. Takes, takes, knight f1. And this is just game over because there's too many things in the white camp hanging. Like everything is hanging. There's nothing you can do here as white. Like, you have to give this check, really. King e2 is apparently the best move. But 
Then I just give this check, I assume, if you try to chase me. Just go to f5, check, king d7, takes, rook takes, and I'm still up a whole piece. So I went up a rook in the game, here I'm still up a piece and it's the worst case scenario. And I'm still up like, what, three pawns as well? So, okay, we uh, go into this line though, and it's a very easy clean up from here. Maybe some of these moves weren't perfect, but... Just kept it nice and simple and delivered a ladder checkmate at the end. So that's the end of the second game analysis. If you stuck around until the end of the video, then thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Please let me know if you like this format of two 10 minute games rather than one 15 minute game. And also, please let me know if you like the premise of the series itself. Karo Khan every single game, no matter what my opponent plays, we are going c6, d5, or c3, d4. And yeah, this should be very interesting. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.